my name is Margot Moore and I just wanted to show you and present to you guys my binder, my portfolio for the end of the semester that we have been working on all year long to present um, for you guys today. I'm really excited about this because I really wanted it to be me and I hope that you guys get that. Um, I put some art special touches in there. And so yeah, I'm really excited to show you guys. So this is my binder and I just got a standard one, nothing too fancy. Um, but what I did is that I, I printed off this and then I used uh, charcoal pastels to create this background to put in the plastic sleeve. So it won't get chalky on my hands or anything, but it does create an art aesthetic look. And it gets me excited for when I need to make lesson plans because let's be real here, lesson plans aren't that amazing to do every day. Um, we definitely might want to be doing just the lesson and making lesson plans aren't the greatest thing to do in the world. So I think this actually makes it more, uh, it makes me want to do it more because I have an organized binder that will help me and um, enthusiates me to be more organized and to create better uh, lesson plans for my subs or for myself. organized it into three sections. The first half is just the uh, lesson plans, the um, the course assignments um, are going not going to be in the um, front, they're going to be in the back. So only the lesson plan unit, the ed TPA ask will be in the section. Video recordings will also be in the section. And the interactive Bitmoji classroom main page printout. So that's all going to be in the first um, first section, including the lesson plans. I really wanted to create a binder that would go into the steps and create subjects. So I will be going over the first half, which is how I set up my CMT um, meeting, like the emails, the preparations, all of the extra little handouts that were helpful. Here I did my CMT meeting and then the Ohio art um bio learning standards so i put those in the front because i feel like those are big things to prep for your lesson plan that's just like the structure of it um yes there's a lot of ideas that you can do but i think the start of it is very important and that's why i put it first in my binder just to okay what do i need to do first within making a lesson plan this is what I need to do. I need to contact the sub maybe, ask them if they're comfortable um, with the with a lesson that I'm gonna be doing in class while I'm gone and creating a paper that maybe will help them. And so this is what I think is gonna be very important. So um, just the agenda is going to be the first part, asking our teacher about, you know, when she's gonna be available for uh, videoing and, um, field work responsibilities, um, and then also the CNT meeting narrative paper that is going to be a part of this first half of the portion for me. And then the part where we had to actually put in each uh, student and what they had so we could accommodate, to accommodate them throughout the lessons. And then the outline of proposed lessons for the semester. So this is what we planned for our each of our lesson plans, our paired and our leader, our individual ones too. So that was like the first part of my lesson. Section is the lessons and each lesson is actually done by color. So yellow is the first one, orange is mine, the um, red is Emma's, I'm the purple, and so on and so forth. So I thought these were very important to keep separate. So I created these separations to create the binder that I wanted. Um, so yeah, the first one is obviously my lesson plan and Emma's lesson plan that we made together. So that was really nice to like, be as our first one because it was. And as we go on, we can see how we've grown in the better lesson plans and stuff like that. And then we also have the art vocab sheets about your about yourself and like 
the um, summaries, step-by-step uh, -step pages, examples, the color wheel, and then obviously like our activity handouts and stuff like that. And then at each end of the, or I guess my uh, individual ones or paired, I did the videotape reflection review. So I do have um, both of these for our first paired one. And then I did this for our first one because I thought it was very important um, because Sherry had a lot of great things to say about our first lesson plan because it was the lowest of all of our grades. Um, it taught me a lot. So I actually printed out the what she said on the rubric. So that was really interesting. And I think I'm gonna look back on that and remember those things that she told me for when I create lesson plans in the next semester. So the second part is my individual one. Again, same thing. Um, I have the um, videotape reflection reviews. Um, then these are Emma's that she emailed to me so I could have and all of her examples. So yeah, each, each lesson is separated with a separating sheet. And that's how I did that with my lessons. So after we go through the lessons and you can see each one that we've done throughout the semester and the prep that we did to make our videos, which obviously we can't put in the binder, um, I am creating all of the like the labs, so like the, um, so like the painting studio, the name tag, what we did to create the hats, the paper folding techniques, the handouts for those, children painting techniques when we did the bubble wrap and the the cloud um, art and when we spinned it into the in the lettuce cleaner to get all the water out of the lettuce, we did that with with the circle, that's this next section. And it's used with a different separator. So I used a like colors, they're kind of like the primary colors. So they're very important. And the examples from the class have this like clear with this green, green tab on the end. So they're just a completely separate um, separator uh, compared to these. So I know what I'm looking at. So yeah goes over the painting one and then it also goes over and I included the examples like for the for our painting one this is all the examples that we did and then also the adaptive art project where we made the molds for the pencils I thought that was very important to look into so that's what I really wanted to touch base on and so I added that into there as well. And the um, everything that was included within the project that was in class, like the handouts and everything else, that is within this um, part of the binder as well. So those are not separate. All additive papers, um, helper tools within the painting studio, the um, sculpture studio, the clay studio, printmaking, that's all going to be in this in order. So we have the zoo animal that we did, and then the printmaking, obviously, with the example in the end. So the examples are always going to be the last picture throughout the, each segment of the studio in my binder. And then the last, the last section is just the extra stuff that, um, that doesn't really go with any of the other parts uh, in the binder. A lot of it is also the things that we did on Zoom, like the different art sections that uh, we filled out on a piece of paper um, while in Zoom and then took a quiz over it. So, and then all of other like helpful, um, like critical inquiry, getting to talk about art to your students. So it's all just helpful things and in order as well throughout the semester. So advantages teaching visual arts to students, the elements of art. Um, also, I added things about the collab lab. We went to the um, studio to learn about editing and 
learning how to get started with iMovie and exporting images. And then I actually put all of these um, where we made all the handouts like the 3D versus 2D, um, keeping your brushes clean, art-based therapy ideas, dyslexia, um, fetal alcohol syndrome. Those are all in here in this section. Like they're all of them printed out is right here. <laughs> they're a very thick portion of the, uh, of my binder. And so this is also what I wanted to show you that I thought was important to print out is the uh, stages of art development most popular in Loanfield and Britain 1987 that we did in Zoom. I thought this was very important. So I wanted to add it to my binder because I feel like it goes unnoticed sometimes when we do on Zoom and we just throw it away once we're done. I really thought I learned a lot in this Zoom. So I wanted to make sure I put it into my binder. And then just the contemporary art in elementary classroom, just ways to create an idea, um, resources like Monet, uh, Picasso, painters, lists of children's book about artists, because I feel like when I look back on this, it'll be so much easier to make a lesson plan because after doing this class, I know it's not easy. It's It gets easier once you keep doing them. But if I just wanna look and create an idea, I can just go to this binder. So that's gonna be very helpful, helpful for me. And then like resource search art ed websites, like, you know, a visual th thesaurus, the doodle revolution, OMA foundation, um, 20, 26 art activities and lessons to try at home. You know, if the pandemic happens again, you know, what if, what if we have another pandemic and 3D lesson ideas? And then I did print off some of the presentations from when we did it over Zoom before we had, we go into class, we had to write, we had to watch presentations. I printed those off. So our education resources and teaching. And so, it talks about going to SRC catalog, visiting the SRC, Ohio link, search Ohio, which I think that are very important. Things that we don't think, you know, like, ah, oh, you know, it's okay. I, I really think they're important. So I put it, mostly everything in here um, from the class, even helper tools. I, I just think that they're very important and it shows how much that I think each little detail goes into creating a lesson and creating an art plan because there's so many different attachments that come to making art. And so creating a binder that's important and organized and presenting it is very important because it shows the importance of myself and how I wanna be able to create lessons for my students in the future. So yeah, this is my pl lesson plan. Um, that's my binder. And I really hope you guys enjoyed my presentation. And I will also be making a video just of me flipping through this. So you don't, you just don't hear me flipping through the pages. Uh, so yeah, thank you so much. And I had a great semester. I really enjoyed this and I learned so much. And this was great to actually um, go through in a pandemic itself. I think this class really benefited me as a future art teacher. So thank you. And the video of me uh, flipping through this will be after this. So here's my binder and I, this is my cover that I made. I used it with color pastel. And so this is the cover and it will remind me of all of the things that I've done in this class and it'll get me excited for when making lesson plans because as we know, lesson plans aren't that fun to make, but using this binder will make it more fun. So I'm gonna start the opening the binder and this is just the rubric so I can check that I have everything. But as I organized my binder, I put it from most important to extras that I would need as I make my lesson plan. So the first of it's gonna be me talking to my advisor, making the, uh, the agenda. So here's my agenda for CMT meeting, the Art 3820 field experience site observation, and then me writing my paper. 
just to get an example of what I need to do if I ever need to email my sub or if I have another teacher coming in. These are all the students that I need to take, be aware of. And then our lesson from one to five. So that's very important because it is throughout the next section of the binder. So I put that as the first part. And then the Ohio learning standards. Those are very important into going into a lesson plan and making that. So I put it as the first section of the binder. And so these five colors, yellow, orange, red, blue, and purple, they are all the lesson plans. So each color is a different lesson plan. So the yellow is the paired. So that's just going through the lesson. Then these are the extras that we were doing, the vocabulary sheet, uh, trigger tree vocabulary assessment, uh, questions to ask yourself about your cat. The We wanted to put in the primary colors for this uh, lesson, so we added that sheet, and then a step-by-step step step activity sheet, just in case you didn't know, um, if you couldn't use the video, and obviously the paper, so you could print that or laminate that if you wanted to use this for a, diff again, for a lesson. So, and then this is the uh, feedback that I got from other peers uh, when watching the video. So I put that in at the end of each lesson that I did. And this is the paired, so Emma and I both got these. And then for the, la for the first lesson plan that I did, I printed out the grade that we got because in the, in the back, Sherry did have some amazing comments. So I just wanted to, uh, add that in because I think it'll be great to look back on and it actually taught me a lot for the next lesson plans so this is my first uh, independent one that I did with clay animals this was very complicated and honestly took a lot more time than I that I didn't expect because there was a clay making portion and then a painting section so this is very this is a thicker lesson so if I wanted to make it a two-day thing I would do this and then just the extras the I did a lot of handouts so I had this is the handout if you couldn't watch the video and then this obviously is the videotaping section and then I added my PowerPoint because you never know sometimes kids can't look at the screen and can't get online so being able to copy these and send them out it's just to get a good to have on hand. As you can see, it was a big section because I had to do a section of painting as well. And then videotape reflection as well. So this is Miss Cavett's section. She did hers more independently. I added her into a lot of my lessons. This one she kind of did on her own, so I think it'll be really interesting to look at and to have on hand if I want to do something like this for when I become an art teacher. So she has a lot of, she has a PowerPoint, some vocab sections and stuff like that. And since it was her independent, I didn't have any reflections from that section. This is my last independent one. My splatter paint project featuring Jackson Pollock, the artist. Here is the vocab sheet that I did and the elements of art. I wanted to add that within the piece and I actually used uh, the example from when we made all of those documents from the first of the class in this lesson. So that was really interesting. And then obviously the presentation that I did because I think the presentations are almost the main focus of the lesson sometimes because it's what the students follow, what they recognize and what step-by-step -step to do. 
So this is Emma's last lesson. Again, she did most of this on her own. And her video was on her own, so I didn't get to see much of what she did and her extras and her um, added material, so this is really cool to see. And then at the end of my uh, section of my lesson plan, I wanted to add my Bitmoji classroom. So this is what I did for Bitmoji. I loved doing this. This is one of my favorite um, assignments we did in this class. And then we have two different types of binder sections. So this is green. Um, and so this is the all of the studios that we did in the class and all of the added helpful tips for each of the um, lessons or the activities we did. So the first one is the name tag. So we did our name tag and then we wrote about it. So this is that. And then I wrote the wonder. So this is the first example. And then that's the helpful tips, the ways, this is the hat one and this is the helpful ways you can, so like loves, uh, French fries, so I would do a pink spiral. Those are helpful little things to do. And then obviously the reflection, I always add those in there because I think it's very important to do that. And then obviously the picture. And then I also wanted to add in the folding examples. So I made a poster on that and I thought it was really important to put that in there even though it wasn't the actual like, um, Activity, but it was something we had to do at home. So I thought this was important and it also shows uh, How different things can help throughout a process of even making a hat like what we did in class so these this is the painting studio. So this is the Presentation that we had to watch before we came into class Just flip through this super fast and then painting genres. And then this is obviously what we did for class. We did the cloud, the string, the bubble wrap, and then I also did the circle one, the splatter paint. This is the additive design. So we did those pencils that have the squishy stuff on top and bottom. I made a butterfly on top how you make an easel out of cardboard. So that was what we did in class. And then this is the clay uh, example that you gave us, the clay, the clay example lesson plan. And then just like a sheet of all the different vocabulary. The fish, taco fish, how to make clay zoo animals, which is what I did for one of my lesson plans. And then there is my bunny. And then this is our last activity we did for this class, which was printmaking. So that was my example that I did for printmaking. Turned out really well, actually. And then, so the last section that we do, and this was is separated with a yellow uh, separator, is the additive sections and the things that we did more so on Zoom that wouldn't be involved with like with these sections. They would almost be kind of, they would probably confuse me more if they were all jumbled together in order of how the class went. So putting all these in the back, the additive helper tools and assignments in this section are all in here. So I'll just go through here a little bit. So this is what we did with iMovie help. We went to the collab lab. And then these are all of the uh, sections we did and we had to present these on Zoom. All of the papers that we did. So first aid for seizure, 3D versus 2D. Keep your brushes clean. And then like some types of disorders like dyslexia, autism spectrum, fetal alcohol syndrome, stuff like that. So 
some common disabilities in the classroom. Clay. This was mine, Elements of Art. First person, first language. And then this is the different section. This was something that was kind of random that I didn't know where to put in my binder. So I put it in the back because I think it's something to look back on and have being something helpful. <clears throat> so this is the stages of artistic development. We actually did this before we took an assessment. So I thought this was very important to add into each, into my binder. And so there's that. And then contemporary art and elementary classroom, creating a lesson plan. These are just helpers to creating a lesson plan. The list of children's books. So this is just stuff to maybe get you inspired. Alternate painting ideas, 3D lesson ideas observation of drawing and then the last thing I added was the um, just a different PowerPoint that we did in class that I think people take for granted is the um, being able to know your options of exploring so going to the SRC Center um, all of the different Ohio art search Ohio Ohio link because these actually really help you in the long run. So I always put those in the back just to, these should probably be always in the first of your mind when making a lesson plan, but um, I think they're just a good reminder just in case you forget. So yeah, that's my lesson plan, or that's my binder. Um, and so this last half is just stuff from class, a little helpful additive tips plus things that we did in class over Zoom. Um, second half is all of the activities, the name tag, hat making, um, the additive pencil, um, print making, painting sculpture, and clay, etc. And then the last section has the Bitmoji classroom, the uh, all of the lesson plans have their own um, folder, so they're all separated. And then the first half is the CMT, the Ohio, all of the learning standards to creating a lesson plan to start it. And so yeah, that is my binder. And I hope you guys have a great day.